Um, of course, the last two times that I shared here are on Thursday night, two times. Um, we actually shared like a Christmas message and it didn't have anything to do with the tabernacle. So for those that, to whom this counts, this shouldn't, the last one shouldn't go under tabernacle because it didn't have anything to do with the tabernacle. Nor will tonight. I, I did some work around the house and the coal yard uh, and then went in and sat down with the Lord to write my newsletter. And I spent from before lunch, because I never ate lunch, all the way till Deb said it's time to eat dinner. And, and the Lord quit just as she texted me and says, come down and eat. Uh, so um, I have no clue what to talk about. Well, okay, Jim, he's on to me. Uh, so I thought a very simple subject, um, which has to do with the cross. If you're okay with that, it's a shocker, I know. <laughs> um, and, it's, and the theme is, of course, love, because that's, that's where you really see the love of God, which we're real, real familiar with. Matthew 22, let's start there. Matthew 22, and <clears throat> verse, let's start at verse 35. Matthew 22, 35. Then one of them who was a lawyer, hmm, uh, asked him a question, testing him and saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all of the law and the prophets. <clears throat> all right, so... Um, the, the way that it was written, and uh, we can see that, come to think of it, the way that the commandment was written, let's go to John 13, Gospel of John 13. And 34. <clears throat> right, so this is where Jesus begins to address that um, in John, a new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. Uh, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if you have love one toward another. Okay. So, clearly, the, the old commandment was to love your, to love your neighbor as yourself which is a pretty high order. I mean, it's totally based on no cross and, and false hopes. <laughs> Not really. But, it's, it's, but I mean, you're never going to love somebody as you love yourself. You'll love them a lot. You'll love them da-da-da-da. But you love yourself. How many of you are okay with me saying that? Well... You do. <laughs> and uh, so Jesus comes along and he says, I give you a new commandment. It sounds very similar. But he says, to love your neighbor as I have loved you. Okay, and the way that we, we'll get into the, the scriptures on that, but the way that he loved us was that he gave, he laid down his life, that he gave him, his, the father gave his only begotten son. Um, and Jesus died for our sins. So that's, that's the love of God, and that's what Jesus is saying, is that this is, this is going to be a new thing. This is not going to be about yourself and measuring everything by yourself, not your love, not anything else. It's going to be about me and my nature in you and my life in you so that you, your measure is me. 
It is not you. It is not self. It is as I have, as I do, uh, that sort of thing. Okay. So uh, to love your neighbor as I have loved you, Jesus would say, could say, I'm talking about cross love. Amen? All right. Um, and he's not talking about any other kind of love because that is agape love. Okay, so we could say that agape is the God kind of love. I've, I've heard people say that. You ever heard somebody say that agape love is the, is the God kind of love? No, agape is God. When it says God is love, it's in the Greek, it's God is agape. He is that. It's not something he does. So that's our first inclination that God is heading toward a nature, and that's what he wants to form in us. Okay. So over in 1 John, I think this will confirm. 1 John is great on this subject. I used to have a 1 John in my Bible, too. 1 John 2, and... Uh, Verse 8 and 9. Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in him and in you. It's not true to you. It's true in him and in you. Because the darkness is past, and the true light now shineth. He that saith he is in the light, and hateth his brother is in darkness even until now. So he is basically saying um, that the new commandment is fulfilled by Christ's life in you and by you by being in him. And he's saying that if you hate your brother, how can you lay down your life for him? Make sense? I mean, if you hate somebody, you go, I ain't laying down my life for you. You know. So, um, so we get into um, how did Jesus love us? We said cross love. I think there's a better way of saying it. Uh, Jesus loved us to death. Jesus loved us to death. Not a nice fuzzy feeling. Jesus loved me to death. It's so fuzzy. No, I mean, no, he literally loved you and took you to death. That's how much he loved you, okay? Oh, well, that's, that's exciting. But the, there's plenty of scriptures, and we'll get into some of them, depending on how fast those numbers come up. Um, uh, let's go to 1 Corinthians so we can see that. 1 Corinthians. First Corinthians 5. I'm just making sure I'm in the right place. First Corinthians 5 and I can't find it. I thought it was here. See, I'm trying to remember all these scriptures. Uh, let's try without turning there, Galatians 2.20. He loved us to death. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, Christ lives in me. That is an act of love to put our old nature to death, to put us to death. It's an act of love. It's not an act of meanness. Okay, so um, who would want to put you to death? Your enemy. But Jesus is not your enemy. Jesus loves you enough to put you to death. He loves you enough to know that, that by doing that, you will gain a new life, and it will be his life. A new life, a new commandment, a new version, a new reality, a new um, fullness instead of emptiness, a new light, and it talked about that in First John, not the old light and not the old measure. All of it has to do with one person. It always will have to do with one person, whether it's Jesus singularly 
or it is us in him as the new man, all of us partaking of one nature, one life, all of us partaking of one ability, okay? So somebody says, well, brother so-and-so or sister so-and-so is so spiritual, you know, and I wish I could be spiritual like that, folks. We're all joined to Christ. We're all branches, you know? And we can all draw out the resources that is his life and his nature freely. He doesn't hold back in that sense. It's all free. But that depends on our connection to him or our connection to ourselves. You know, if our connection is my abilities, how well I see, how much I love Jesus, how much, you know, all of that kind of stuff, then then the Holy Spirit is going to have one plan for your life, and that is to bring you down to show you that you, it's not about you. It's not about your abilities, and that your abilities won't stand up under cross-examination. <laughs> they won't do it. They can't do it. They must fail. Okay, so if God actually is working in your life to cause you to fail so that you will... Um, abide more um, is God mean well could God initiate things in your life to cause you to fail or to cause you to have a hard time I mean he's just as interested get this he's just as interested of showing you how much you need Jesus as or let me say it a different way. He's just as interested as showing you how bad you are as he is in showing how great Christ is. Why? Because it's like the scales over there. If your life has all of this, you're taking all of this, and everything's being weighed in the, in the balance of you, then you're in the ascendancy. You're the one that's, that it's all about. But if he begins to take those things out of you one at a time, then you'll start crying out for something, you know, something. I mean, I always think of the woman with the issue of blood, and so she's walking along, and it says that she's, you know, she's been to doctors and, and uh, all these doctors and all this stuff, and up to the point where she spent all, A-L-L. -L. And now she's traipsing behind Jesus, ready to traipse behind Jesus. There's a big crowd. I don't, you know, if she's that sick, I'm thinking she's pretty frail. What do you think? I'm thinking she's pretty frail. And it's a huge crowd. And all she's trying to do is get to Jesus. In fact, she's, she has so much faith that this is finally it. I know, I've tried everything else. You know what I mean? I've tried everything else. This is it. If I can just touch the hem of his garment. Okay. All right, she didn't say, if he would just touch me. La, 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 la. Chocolate milk break. If he would just touch me. That is, that is so yesterday. That is so old creation. <laughs> that is so old creation right there. Um, because that makes it about us. But she's, she, yes, she's got a problem. She's, she's got a need, and it was desperate. It wasn't just bad. It was desperate. It didn't say anything about a husband or anything else. It just said she'd spent everything she had, and she was no better. No better. If I could touch him, if I could just touch him, not him stop, you know, and go like this, like a preacher. And the Lord, da, 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 wait a minute, there's somebody in this room who has a headache. <laughs> du, 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 you know, um, but instead, somebody sitting there going, Jesus, I just want to touch you. I just want to reach you. I just want, I just believe that. What's in you, and you remember it says, and virtue came out of him and went into her. Something that's in him went into her and poof. 
and if our motive could change. But our motive will never change without the cross. Can I get amen? Because it's always going to be there. It's always, you know, our motive is like a sneaky little Grinch, since it's around Christmas time. <laughs> our motive is like a sneaky little Grinch, and it's always working things for its own favor and for whatever it can get out of it and all this kind. It can't forget itself. It can't. There must be a death. God loves you enough to bring you to death, but he doesn't leave you in death, does he? He raises you up in him, not by him. Jesus didn't say, I'm the, I am the resurrector. I am the resurrection, and I'm the life of resurrection. And, and when that dawns beyond um, teaching, when it dawns beyond teaching, when it dawns beyond teaching and the Spirit of God begins to open the heart of Jesus through the Word of God and begins to open his face, you begin to see these truths in light of him, not in light of them being true. Because your spirit will bear witness with the Holy Spirit that that's the truth, you know. And you can go and you can even have your spirit leap in you, you know, like... John the Baptist in Elizabeth's womb when Mary came into the room, and I guess they were womb mates too, um, just leaped. But, you know, just leaping in the womb of Elizabeth doesn't form Christ in you. He's still over there being formed in her. Oh, I, I perceive Christ is being formed in her. Big deal. Get your eyes on Jesus. This would turn out to be another Christmas message here. <laughs> Jesus being born and all that. Get your eyes on, on him. Stop trying to get him to touch you and say, I just want to touch you, Lord. I, it's not about me. It's not about my problems. It's about you. And if I can be with you under any condition, as long as I'm with you but Lord leave me to myself and I'll start hating myself or loving it depending on what mood you're in you'll love, you'll love yourself or hate yourself you'll be in self pity or self righteousness all of itself self still going yeah you know Self loves to hear you go. You know, I'm not going to be in self pity anymore. I'm going to be. I'm going to be at the Lord. But it's that self righteousness, you know. And he goes, it's still me. It's still self. Do it. Do it. Do it. Yeah. Go for God. But it's not really going for God. It's going for you. And when you're in Christian circles, you just go round and round. That just that just came out. What? Two minutes? Is that enough time for one minute? All right. So, so then, how do I make this real? How do I break the chain? How do I, how do I get out of the cocoon, you know? Um, you know, I, I was sick of being a caterpillar. I wanted to be a butterfly, but I didn't know he's going to lock me up in a cocoon because <laughs> it's darker than what I was as a caterpillar. At least I could see the light of day. How do I get out of that? Well, honestly, it starts with hearing something that the, the dove descends on. It's and. And at that moment, because you're not going to remember, you won't, you're not going to remember what I'm sharing tonight. You, you know, you're not going to ever remember hardly anything I share except what the Holy Spirit brings to your remembrance, maybe. But that's, you know. Um, so you have to grab it yes. when it's there. When the Spirit says something or convicts you, I mean, it doesn't have, see, it doesn't have to be 
It doesn't have to be. The spirit comes down the dove says, it's Jesus and it's Jesus this way. Uh, he can come down and say, you see that? You're just the opposite of that. When that happens, either way, lifting up Jesus or pointing out that you're not Jesus in that area, then at that moment, <laughs> grab that dove and pray and say, Father, make this real in me. I'm serious. I want you, and I want you every minute of every class, of every church service, of every worship service. But I'm, but I, I'm grabbing you now. And I, I've said, this is how I prayed before. I know I'm going to forget this and forget what I'm praying right now, but you won't forget it. Make it a memorial throughout all generations in my being. And if you don't, I'm stuck. I need a father. I need a guide, the Holy Spirit. I need a husband. I need a head. I need, I need you. And I need you because of your fullness, not just because of my emptiness. Can you go with that? Be, okay. And, and you see, you start, and you can say, I mean, again, I've prayed so many times these different things. That, you know, Lord, I, I'm saying it right right now, but I'm not right. And I admit that right now, I do that. I'm, I admit it right now that I'm not right and I'm not spiritual because I just said it right. <laughs> so I'm, I'm fessing up here, Lord, and I really would like for you to do something. And I think that if you see that my heart is really wanting you, that you, in your timing, I, I know I want to rush it. But I don't want to rush you. I want you to be able to do it in perfect timing. So I'm trusting you with these things. And I love you. And I need you and I'll always need you. Okay. I mean, you can't go wrong doing that. You know what I mean? You can't go wrong capturing every uh, firefly that goes by. I guess you don't have those in Arizona, huh? Fireflies? Butter, uh, I mean, uh, that's what we call them. Anyway, little things that fly around and light up. Um, so you cap, you're, you're about, you know, since you can't live in eternity, you grasp every moment that you can to be with the Lord. I want, if you can have one true moment with the Lord in a day, it's better than none. Amen? I know, we're, we're done here, but so why don't you all just take a moment to pray about it, and uh, we'll come back for the next part. Just, it doesn't have to be a long prayer. Just pray your heart.